Thank you for choosing my channel and the interest that you have in creating the string journal. I made this string journal for a friend of mine that is a very near and dear friend to myself and my family. And she is an artist and I wanted to create a book that she could keep her art in. And I have included in this a bunch of blank watercolor paper for her to illustrate and to store underneath these strings. So, it, you know, the binding is just the string and the pages tuck underneath that string so they can come in and out. She also has a young child that uh, is also very artistic. And I thought it would be a great place for them both to store their art pieces. So this is what the book looks like when completed. It is bound in velvet and leather on the side with some embellishments. And the book is very uh, intuitive to her personality, I guess I would say. It is filled with uh, paper I've made. It is also filled with images of an alien which is one of her passions, outer space and aliens and things like that she's very interested in. My name is Peg. I am with Two Old Crows Mixed Media, or that is what I call my channel. I hope you will subscribe and hit that notification bell so you will know when I upload any additional content. So I was making a trip through the thrift store and I ran across this children's book about three little aliens that uh, tackled a robot and found a new home. And it was a very horizontal presented book and I chose to alter it. I cut it apart and made it more of a portrait or a vertical oriented book. So I have utilized it as the foundation for this piece that we're creating. And I am utilizing a second book to create the frame for a picture of an alien that I have chosen out of this book. So we'll just set this atop. I'm going to cut it down to make it um, a little more appealing. So I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and just score that and cut that um, book cover down to a frame-like size. And then I have a spindle that, uh, I don't know whether wire came on or ribbon, but I'm gonna use it and draw around the outside edge of it to create my opening or my circle shape. And then I will just utilize my X-Acto knife to cut through this book cover. I'm standing up to do that because it does require a little additional pressure and I'm being very careful to keep my hand out of the way in case I would slip because the pressure I'm putting on this X-Acto knife would not be a comfortable cut. So now that I have that cut, I'm gonna set it aside and we will put the book together. I have just cut a one and a half inch spine out of uh, cardboard um, and I'm going to secure it to the book cover with duct tape. And you can see I'm putting that duct tape in a U type shape. The reason I do this is when I line the spine up next to the cover, it has a uh, chance to wiggle around. And if I U that duct tape and then very gently touch the center of that duct tape down on my spine and my cover, I can get that secured without any movement. So watch this. I'm going to pull it out with the U. I have it pre-cut and just lightly tap it down and then move it top to bottom. And there you have it. It is in place without any movement. So I'm going to put an additional piece of duct tape here and just really get that, that spine adhered to my book covers. Now I cut off the excess duct tape, but you can also just fold that over. I didn't want that additional um, depth there. 
And now I'm going to duct tape on the other side and just go edge to edge. And once all of that is in place, we have completed the construction or the foundation of this string journal. See how it folds together? That's, it makes a nice, a nice size book. So now I'm going to cover it in, in just a craft paper to, um, you know, be able to paint and, and go back and do whatever we want to do. Now, there's two schools of thought in covering this with the craft paper. One is to wrap it like you would a gift so that all of the edges are wrapped. I saw another channel that just cut the pages exactly to the size of the cover and just glued them up so that the craft paper would go edge to edge or to the very edge. So my first initial thought was that is how I would do this. So you'll see me butt this up right to the very edge. And then I make the decision to go ahead and wrap it anyway. So I, you kind of have both here. And in the end project, you couldn't tell the difference. And it didn't make any difference. So either way is good, whichever way pleases you. Personally, I prefer to wrap. This is um, tacky glue. I'm using a tacky glue to glue the craft paper down to the cover of the book and I am just spreading it so it is a fine layer with that uh, hotel key card. That keeps you know, bubbles and, and other things from forming and underneath the paper and keeps the paper um, pretty, pretty straight and avoids the wrinkles. And that went on very nice. I'm just going to trim it down so I have a little bit to fold over and get those corners glued well. And now I'm just folding it over and gluing it down. And as I told you before, you know, you see one edge that is butted up and then you'll see the, the other two edges on each side that are folded over. And like I said before, in the end project, you're not going to be able to tell which is which. And that gets that foundation in place. So we'll let all of that glue dry. And then we'll come back and start to decorate the outside of the book. So now that the glue is dry, I have this uh, stencil, I think it's called Fractured Circles. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I I purchased it online and I believe it is a Diane Wakely stencil and I just pulled my texture paste through that stencil and I am putting it on um, just kind of random um, on both the front and the back of the book. The texture paste recipe I make my own. It is I'll either link it with a card on on this uh, particular screen or you will also find it in the comments section in this video. So we will get all of these pulled through the stencil onto the book cover. And then we will set this aside and allow the texture paste to do it. 
And I just uh, pull, I use a popsicle stick in my texture paste or a craft stick, and I just put a dollop of it down on my stencil, and then I pulled it through the stencil with one of those hotel key cards. I use this for just about everything. <laughs> And this side was kind of messy, but, you know, I'm okay with that because I think, you know, the overall finished project, what I want it to look like, I think that works out fine. So now I'm going to cover this. Once the texture paste is dried, I'm going to coat it with black gesso. And I start with my key card and then decide to go back with my large brush because I want to make sure that I get this covered really well with the black gesso. And then we'll set that aside and allow it to dry. And once dry, I am using a coarse sandpaper and just sanding over the texture paste and sanding the gesso to give it just a, a little distress look. And once we complete that sanding, we're going to come back in with a second color. Okay, so now you can see my fractured circles. I have a little spot here that I think I want to cover up with some more gesso. And now I am using a really deep blue, and I am going to pull that blue down on this cover with that uh, key card. It's Ultra Marine Blue by um, Arteza is what I'm using. There we go. Another key card. And I'm just scraping that over. And we'll let that dry. And come back with the sandpaper and sand again. Let that dry and back with a gold. Allow that to dry and once again sand so you get the process paint sand paint sand paint sand now that everything is you know sanded down the way we want it i am getting out the mars black and using the key card i've just put a little bit of water in and watered that down a little bit and I'm pulling that key card through it and using the card to put uh, just lines randomly along the cover and I like to put them in odd numbers so three five one whatever and I'm also going to use the bottle cap and just creating some noise some interest on the covers Now I'm going to set that aside and let that dry and work on the frame for the front cover to let our little alien peer through. So I'm covering this in um, book pages and I am doing that to create the foundation and I'm going to wrap this so the edge of it is nice and clean. This is about a quarter inch thick. And I want to make sure when I put it down that the outside edges are, are very crisp and clean and, and covered in, in the color that we want this to be. So I am using the glitter glue to just fold those book pages over once the Mod Podge 
that I used to put them on with has dried. Now I'm going to coat this entire piece in a white gesso just to give it a little more grab to take the texture paste and ink that I'm going to put down next. I'm going to let that dry and I will come back in with uh, a coat of that uh, dark paint and now I'm going to add some texture paste and I just decided to cover the white gesso with the dark just in case um, any of this gesso cracked off or there were cracks in the gesso where you could see the foundation or the bottom piece I wanted it to be a dark color underneath there so that was the purpose of, of painting that on top of the gesso and now I am just putting the texture paste on and just dappling it on and making sure that I get it um, kind of thick on there you know making sure the color is all covered and I'm just dabbing it on and smearing it around with my fingers it's kind of obvious wouldn't it <laughs> and now that i have that down i'm just going to clean my hands off here a minute and then i'm going to pull in a tool that I actually purchased to use with my jelly plates and I am going to use it in this texture paste just to create um, some lines in the texture paste or some texture and I'm going to cross hatch them on there so I'm going to come vertical and then I'm going to come back and go horizontal with it and that you know kind of created a really nice relief pattern in there and I will Go soak that in some water and make sure I get all the texture paste off of that tool. But um, after it dries, I'm painting it black with an acrylic black ink. And I'm going to use the same color to come inside the book to just create a border for the, for the paper that I'm going to lay down on the inside. Now the book is going to be bound with velvet and leather. So I'm cutting strips of leather and then I will um, put three holes in the center to pull my strings through. And I'm just staging that, the leather over here, I also pulled or cut some black velvet. And you can see that just staged on the spine while I work on this cover to add some embellishments to it. So I'm just adding some embellishments to that frame. But, you know, I had started on cutting that leather and I wanted to let you know what I had done there. So that is just staged off to the side while I get comfortable with how our little frame is going to go on that front cover. And I think he looks cute underneath that. So he'll just be glued down. And now I am gluing that velvet down. And just laying my leather in place. Now I have punched holes in that leather for the strings and I have marked holes for my other old crow to go through both the leather and the spine or the book to secure these in place and we are going to secure these in place with a grommet and he has pushed the grommet through and now he will Put the washer on the other side and just hammer that grommet 
into place. He's sitting at my jewelry bench now. He's using my piece of steel that I use when I'm fabricating jewelry. But see him put the other piece of that grommet on and use a grommet tool, and he's just hammering that grommet into place to create our spine. So you have in total five holes punched in your piece of leather, two for the grommets, three to pull the strings through. Does that make sense? And now he's just getting rid of all the rough edges and securing that grommet in place. And there you have it. Doesn't that look nice? And now we can finish out the spine by trimming the velvet down. And I'm just taking my shears and, and uh, going along the outside edge to get it where it, it looks nice on the um, outside of those leather pieces and trimming off the top and the bottom. I just use my X-Acto knife for that. So just cutting off the excess there at the top and the bottom. And there is the finished spine. I think it looks very nice. So now we will work on the frame and get that frame into place and also the inside back and front cover. And I've decided just to use a black cardstock here. I was going to, um, you know, add some additional embellishments, but I'm not sure that it needs it. So I'm just with the art glitter glue going to glue this piece of black cardstock in place on both the inside front and the inside back cover. Okay, and there you have it, the finished outside. And now just putting this little alien in his home underneath this frame, and we will get him pushed down and glued to the front cover. And I'm just marking where I want him to go, and I'm gonna use some double-sided tape to make sure that he is securely in place. And once I get all of this double-sided tape down, we will remove the backing off of it and stick our little alien on there. And he can live on the front cover of this book. There he goes. And then I'll come back and, and trim off any excess that might stick out from underneath. You can see that there might be a little bit there on that right side. And then we'll glue, glue him down in place there. And now we'll put the strings in for her to insert her art. So I'm just measuring out the length times three. And I'm going to uh, thread that string on a needle to get it through the holes that I've punched in that leather. And I think that's the most difficult thing that, that I've done on this book is getting this darn needle threaded. So we'll get that string put through the eye of this needle in a second here. And once we do, we'll pull that thread through the leather on both sides and tie that off to create a spot to insert the paper. And the paper will just, you know, you fold it in half and, and slide it in there, and the paper will just nestle um, very comfortably on this piece of, of string. And this is just kitchen string. I just um, utilized kitchen string. 
And there is the finished piece with the watercolor paper. And I also added some echo dye paper that I had done inside this book, the front cover. And you can see the different textures that are on here, the leather, the grommets, the velvet, the um, textured cover, the textured frame, and the little alien peeking through. And I have given this away as a gift, and she was very, very happy with it. So again, my name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Pros Mixed Media. And I hope you will join me by subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification bell and coming back when I have additional content uploaded. I have put the subscribe button in the upper left. You can click there. And I've added a playlist of a um, you know different project that I'm working on that you might find of interest. So thanks for stopping by. See you soon.